I'm going to show you guys three gameplay clips. See if you can notice anything unusual. While these clips may accurately represent the intelligence level of the average casual player, encountering dumb players is obviously nothing unusual. So what's really going on here? In the first clip, right after the scout's body explodes into a million pieces, you'll notice some spooky ghosts appearing. That seems a little bit odd. In the second clip, if you look at the sentry, you'll see some awfully strange looking projectiles. In the third clip, if you zoom in close on the soldier's feet, you'll notice some peculiar purple flame following the soldiers each and every move. So what's so unusual about these clips? That's right, it ain't the unusuals. In each of these clips, a player is using an item haunted with a spooky Halloween spell. Now you might be wondering, what actually is a Halloween spell? At their most basic level, Halloween spells are items like paints, killstreaks, and festivizers that can be applied to a base item to give that item a cosmetic bonus. Like many Halloween items, spells are holiday restricted, meaning you can only use spelled items during Halloween events or during a full moon. In TF2, there are a wide variety of different types of spells, each granting an item a slightly different flashy, Halloween-themed effect. This effect could range from spawning ghosts when you kill a player, turning your sentry rockets into pumpkins, or following your TF2 character with spooky footprints. In many ways, describing spells as many unusuals isn't all that far off. That said, unlike unusuals, Halloween spells are relics of a distant past. First introduced almost 8 years ago in the Halloween 2012 update, spells were first added as drops from haunted Halloween gifts, which were distributed as rewards for playing on Halloween maps. You could continue to obtain spells in the Halloween 2013 and 2014 updates, but as of 2015 when the Soul Gargoyle replaced haunted Halloween gifts, new spells became no longer obtainable and were removed from player inventories. While previously applied spells still continue to exist to this day, this discontinuation of spells has made spelled items something of an oddity among TF2 items, being both rare and obscure enough that you're not all that likely to encounter them in your day-to-day -day playing of TF2. As interesting and rare as spells are, you'd think a trader main like myself might actually be a specialist in these types of items. However, until quite recently, I didn't actually know much, if anything, about spelled items. I mean, like, I knew they existed in some capacity, as I'd owned items that just so happened to have spells on them, but I never really knew what they did, how much they cost, and why someone would care to own one. After all, why would anybody care about items that were holiday restricted and couldn't be utilized 90% of the year? It turns out that there are two big reasons why. The first has to do with community servers. As it turns out, many community servers, such as trade servers, have spells enabled permanently, meaning you can enjoy your Halloween shenanigans at any time of the year. You can show off your spell in red spawn, kill somebody with a spell in the heavy boxing arena, or do whatever the hell that person is doing, but with a spell. Further, you can temporarily turn any Valve server into a community server by making use of an Eternal Ween enchantment. For the low low price of just 4 refined, until it gets bought out, just you wait, you can prompt a vote to enable the spirit of Halloween. Hey guys, can you guys please vote? Thanks for doing your service. Wait, 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 that's, you guys, that's the wrong vote. You're not supposed to vote though. What the fuck? Anyway, the second reason people care about spells has to do with trading. Because spells are both rare and add-ons to other items, you can't actually find prices for spelled items on Backpack.tf, the popular community pricing website, because the website doesn't support pricing them. This means that traders have a much greater ability to set their own prices and ultimately make higher profit margins selling spells than items with prices on Backpack.tf. It also means that bots, uh, not those bots, trade bots have a much harder time buying and selling spells, allowing spell traders a glimpse of the quote unquote good old days before the proliferation of trade bots fundamentally changed TF2 trading. To support this large influx of spell traders, a number of Discord servers dedicated exclusively to spell trading have arisen in recent years, creating a place for people to buy, sell, and most importantly price spelled items. You see, although many traders relish the fact that spells don't have prices on Backpack.tf, they'd also admit you'd be hard pressed to sell a spelled item without at least having a rough estimate of its value, and thus are happy to give price estimates if you ask. 
to get a price for a particular spelled item, jump into the spell pricing channel and give the spell pricers a ping. Uh, one more time. And one last time, uh, just for good measure. Ah, there we go. Pro tip. If you go up to the top right hand corner, you can search for the spell you're asking about to see if it has been priced in the past. This is a great technique to utilize if you want to get a price quickly without getting banned. Anyway, while it's easy to joke about spell discords, especially in the suspicious way that those pricing spells are the ones buying and selling those same spells, spell discords are actually an invaluable resource to the TF2 community. Before Discord, spells were quite a bit harder to sell, simply because people didn't know what they were or how to price them in any meaningful way. But with the information provided by spell discords, however, spell trading has been revitalized and there are now more people buying and selling spells than ever before. At this point, I've talked a lot about spells at a high level. However, if I've piqued your interest about spells at all, you probably want to know a little bit more about what each spell actually does so that you can determine what kinds of spells you might want most for yourself. In TF2, there are four types of spells. Weapon spells, voice spells, paint spells, and footprint spells. Exorcism is the most common weapon spell, which causes ghosts to appear whenever you get a kill, similar to the haunted ghost unusual effect. The spell can be found on any weapon that can get kills, but is most common on stock weapons like rocket launchers and miniguns rather than less popular weapons like the Righteous Bison. Next, Pumpkin Bombs is a spell found on projectile-based weapons that turns the weapon's projectiles into orange pumpkins with a purple trail behind them. The spell can be found on grenade launchers, sticky bomb launchers, rocket launchers, and engineer melee weapons, the latter of which affects your sentry rockets, not the melee weapon itself. The final weapon spell is Halloween Fire, which is a spell that can be found on flamethrowers that turns their normal red flame into a spooky green color. Halloween Fire is especially interesting on the Phlogistonator, as the flog's normal animation is replaced with regular fire, making it look like a stock flamethrower. Up next are voice spells, or spell to be more accurate. This is because there's only one voice spell you can find on items, called Voices from Below. The spell modifies your character's voice lines to be deep and scary sounding, and can be found on any cosmetic item. Jeez! What the hell was that crap? Oh yeah! Next time somebody's giving you a hard time in a casual match, just break out the spirit of Halloween and get back at them. Who wants some of this? Okay. Next on the list are paint spells. As you might expect, paint spells can be found on any paintable cosmetic and change the item's color. However, unlike regular paints, paint spells change color over time, creating a sweet ebbing and flowing color effect on your cosmetic. Sinister staining, dye job, and putrescent pigmentation are all yellow-based paints, but fade out into slightly different colors. Chromatic corruption and spectral spectrum, on the other hand, are very different from the rest. Chromatic Corruption gives your cosmetic a deep purple color, and Spectral Spectrum rocks team colors, just like the team spirit paint. The final type of spells are Footprint Spells. These spells can be found on any type of cosmetic, and leave a particle effect in the wake of your TF2 mercenary. There are more Footprint Spells than any other type of spell, so you really can't get a Footprint Spell to match any kind of loadout you are making. However, you should keep in mind that many Footprint Spells don't come as advertised, as many of the spell colors don't match up to the spell name whatsoever. For example, Corpse Grey is a dull green color instead of grey. Violet, Violet, and Bruise Purple are light red, Gangrene is an acidic yellow color, and Team Spirit on the blue team looks a lot more like light green than blue itself. The one spell that looks the most like its name is probably Rotten Orange Footprints, which is a bright orange color. There's one more footprint spell called Headless Horseshoes, which is a dark purple color similar to Chromatic Corruption. And that's it for spells. Unlike Unusuals, there's not hundreds of spell effects in the game, which is great because it means I can cover them all in a single video without it being 25 minutes long, which, editors know, is really fucking nice. Anyway, our discussion on spells is still missing one important thing. Prices. After all, how much each spell costs is directly proportional to your ability to buy it, so if you want to start trading spells or buy some to hold on to, you probably want to get a general idea of how much each type of spell is going to cost without having to rely exclusively on the prices given to you on spell discords. Since spells are add-ons, we typically want to know how much value the spell adds to the base item, not necessarily the total item value. 
Spells tend to add one or more keys in value, making them more expensive than most low tier items, but cheaper than most unusuals. Now, in order to get the most out of these prices, you need to understand the spell prices very significantly, depending on how desirable the base item and spell are in combination, not just the spell itself. The prices I'm going to give you will be representative of an average item with a certain spell, but depending on many factors, you could find an item that is worth more or less. For example, rarity plays a big factor in spell prices, and a good looking spell could easily sell for less than an ugly spell if the good looking spell is extremely common. You can look up the rarity of spells on a website called tf2tools.net by going up into tools and then hitting applied spell frequencies. With that in mind, let's get into the specifics. The one voice spell, Voices from Below, typically adds about a key or two in value to the base item. Deep voice lines are popular, but not super noticeable compared to visual particle effects. In terms of weapon spells, Exorcism tends to be the lowest tier spell, and adds about a key to the weapon's value. Pumpkin Bombs and Halloween Fire are bigger, more noticeable effects, and typically add at least a couple of keys in value to a weapon. It's actually possible for a weapon to have two spells on it, and these doubly spelled weapons can often add as much as five or more keys in value. Spells on strange weapons also tend to add more value than on non-strange weapons. For paint spells, the yellow paints are lower tier than the rest, with Sinister Staining, Dye Job, and Putrescent Pigmentation adding about three keys on average, while Chromatic Corruption and Spectral Spectrum typically add about four to five keys. In addition to item rarity, the paint region of a spell, or the amount of the cosmetic that is modified by the paint, plays a large part on the price of the spell. As you can imagine, spells on cosmetics with large paint regions like the Dead of Night are typically going to be much more noticeable and thus more expensive than cosmetics with small paint regions like the Voodoo Juju Slight Return. Footprint spells are the most expensive type of spell. Violent Violet and Corpse Grey are generally considered to be the lowest tier footprints and add about 4-5 to five keys on average, followed by Bruise Purple and Team Spirit, which typically add about 5-6 to six keys. Due to being both bright and noticeable, Gan Green and Rotten Orange are some of the higher tier footprint spells and typically add about 6-7 to seven keys. At the very top, most would agree that Headless Horseshoes is the very highest tier footprint spell and adds about 8 keys on average. Although voice, paint, and footprint spells can all be applied to cosmetics, it has never been possible to apply more than 2 spells to an item. To me this has always seemed kinda dumb, but this was the way that Valve implemented spells back in 2012. As a result, you won't ever find a triply spelled item, but it is still possible to encounter cosmetics with a voice spell and a paint spell, a paint spell and a footprint spell, or a footprint spell and a voice spell. These doubly spelled items are quite rare and can be very desirable to collectors, particularly in the case of a color themed spell and paint combination. In practice, the price of these spells are highly dependent on how much a buyer is willing to pay, and as such can be some of the most profitable spells for traders. If you encounter one of these items, always make sure to ask for a price check on Discord to make sure you at least have a general idea of how much you might be able to get for it. Now, as rare and as costly as doubly spelled items can be, there is actually a class of spells that are far, far rarer and more expensive. Remember how I said that spells were discontinued after the Halloween 2014 update? Well, it was Valve's intention to remove all unused spells from player inventories after the event ended. However, because spells were only removed when a player logged in, some players were able to take advantage of an exploit that allowed them to trade and apply their spells without ever logging in. Valve eventually patched this when the Tough Break update came out in late 2015, but the bug still allowed a small number of spells to be applied to new cosmetics that were released during late 2014 and 2015, such as items from the end of the line, Winter 2014, Gunmetal, Invasion, and Halloween 2015 updates. These rare spells, dubbed post-life spells, exist on items that were never meant to have spells on them in the first place, and as such have become some of the most sought after items in the game, fetching as much as hundreds of keys in some scenarios. At the end of the day, spells represent some of the rarest and most unique items in the game. In my mind, they would be as celebrated and well known as unusuals if it were not for one thing, their holiday restriction. I know that some people might oppose this, but I genuinely believe that one of the best things Valve could do for spells is remove this restriction and allow spells to be usable in casual matches any time of the year. In fact, while we're at it, why not remove all holiday restrictions whatsoever? Traditionally, the argument against this has been that it breaks the art style and that these holiday cosmetics are simply too wacky for normal TF2. But let's be honest, 
It's been years since Valve took the art style seriously, fueled in large part by the creativity of the Steam Workshop. In the last five years, we've gotten space-themed cosmetics, blatant IP theft, unusual effects ranging from ducks to purple flames, 15 million animal-themed hats, and so much more. And you know what? I'm all for it. In my opinion, part of TF2's charm comes with its crazy hats and cosmetics. Yeah, these new items might be more out of the box than we've ever seen before, but that doesn't mean they don't have a place within TF2. So my question to Valve is this, why not spells as well? 